Hi, this is the fourth video in uh, the series on anxiety disorders and obsessive compulsive disorders. This uh, video is going to be about obsessive compulsive disorder. And in order to understand obsessive compulsive disorder, we need to know what obsessions are and what compulsions are. So it's important to remember that obsessions are thoughts and compulsions are behaviors. So um, obsessions aren't just thoughts, they're persistent, they're intrusive, sometimes they're urges, and they are un they're experienced as unwanted. So um, they're invasive. You know, if you ever suddenly have a thought, oh my God, what if, you know, my partner dies in a car accident? That would be an intrusive thought that is unwanted, right? Uh, if it happened over and over again, it would be persistent. Um, urges are, urges kind of fall between obsessions and compulsions, honestly. So, um, an urge might be, I'm standing on a bridge looking over the edge and I have an urge to jump, even though I'm not suicidal, I don't want to die and I don't want to do this at all. But there's this sudden urge. Um, there's some thoughts that maybe some people who have fear of heights are actually afraid that they will have an urge to jump, which is not uncommon. It doesn't, it, it has nothing to do with being suicidal. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts, and we'll talk about what, what those are. And typically they're in response to an obsession. It doesn't always look like it. You can't always see what the obsession is. And they're often very rigid. So we're gonna talk more specifically, but what I really want you to remember is that obsessions are thoughts and compulsions are behaviors. Um, and, you know, maybe a few words about what obsessive compulsive disorder is not. So sometimes, you know how people say, I'm really OCD? We know what they mean. They mean that they are maybe very particular or neat, clean, um, uh, um, have to be right on time. And they're talking about something else. And we'll get to that later in, in this course or um, in these videos when we talk about obsessive compulsive personality disorder. That's not what this is. This is not necessarily about being clean or neat or on time. Um, okay, I'll go back here. Anyhow. So this is the uh, DSM's diagnostic criteria for obsessive compulsive disorder. So again, we have obsessions, which are persistent thoughts, urges, or images and um, they're intrusive, unwanted, and they cause anxiety or distress. So you may have wondered why I included obsessive compulsive disorders in the same series as anxiety disorders. And that's because the, the, the ultimate core of obsessive compulsive disorder is anxiety. And the DSM actually used to include obsessive compulsive disorder under anxiety disorders. Um, as it did with trauma disorders uh, and a lot of others. They were all lumped under anxiety disorders. Uh, and since then, every, every DSM, as the DSM gets older, it seems to break um, areas of disorders down into more and more specific. Um, so now obsessive compulsive disorders have their own category. But the core, the foundation here really is anxiety. And um, we'll, we'll talk about how that works. So, um, with obsessions, typically the person tries to suppress those thoughts or get rid of them in some way, right? You, they're uncomfortable, you want to avoid them. And typically with OCD, the person avoids them by performing a compulsion. And compulsions are the repetitive behaviors. Here you have some examples. Hand washing, ordering, checking. Those are behaviors. Mental acts, praying, counting, repeating words, um, 
I had a client who used to have to type everything that she heard on her fingers. So you wouldn't see much except maybe a little bit of twitching of the fingers, kind of like this. But what she was doing was typing every word that she heard. That's a compulsion. And compulsions are typically aimed at reducing anxiety from, from the obsessions, right? Um, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some examples. So I think that'll make it a little easier. Uh, let's talk about, say, an obsession of checking. So sometimes at night, I get into bed, and once I'm in bed, I think, ooh, did I lock the front door? Now, do you think I'm going to fall asleep before I check? Mm -mm. No way. So I have to get up and go and check to make sure that I lock the front door. So I might go over to the lock and, you know, just, just lock it and lock it. Let's say it was locked. I might unlock and lock it again just to make sure, right? And then I go back to bed. Normally I'm fine, right? I happen to not have that problem. But let's say I got back into bed and then I thought, Ooh, what if I, when I was checking, what if I actually unlocked it? And now it's not locked. So I have to go back and check. So I go back. I make sure that it's, if it's locked, I unlock it, then I lock it, then maybe I'll unlock it and lock it again, just to make sure, right? And then I go back to bed. And you can kind of see where this is going. Now, sometimes it becomes a short routine. Uh, a lot of us, by the way, have little, little pieces of this around our lives, so don't pathologize yourself with this. It's not, what I just described is not that uncommon. It starts becoming a problem if for a whole hour before going to bed, you have to unlock and lock the door, you know, 17 times, then 20 times, then go back into bed, then get out of bed, then, you know, and that that takes you a whole hour or two. Or um, if there are other rituals involved in it, right? So the obsession is the fear that the door is unlocked. Somebody might come in and, you know, break in and harm you or your family or steal something. That's the obsession. That's the thought. The compulsion is aimed to reduce the obsession. So I can't go to sleep unless I'm sure that the door is locked. So I go and check and that relieves my anxiety, right? So now I'm not worried and I can go to sleep. It becomes a problem when we start developing these long rituals or just can't let go of the, the mm, insecurity, the anxiety, the fear that the door is unlocked or the windows are unlocked or I left the stove on. How many of you have ever left for work and or left for school in the morning? You're in your car, maybe you're even halfway there and suddenly think, did I turn off the fill in the blank, the oven, the iron, the hair, uh, the hair iron flattener, um, you know, any of those things that could potentially burn your house down. Uh, now it's nice, they have, a lot of them have automatic shutoffs. Not because I think people leave them on so much, but because people worry about leaving them on. And then you have to go home and check, right? Even if you're pretty convinced that you turned it off, you still might have to go home and check. So the checking relieves the anxiety that your house will burn down, right? Um, I'll give you another example. It's a classic children's example. And by the way, we can, OCD can start very early. You can see it in children as young as three um, with ordering their shoes. Maybe and they get very, very anxious, very anxious and might cry and have tantrums if things aren't the way they need them to be. Uh, so let's say you are a child. What is your greatest fear? Let's say you're four. Well, your greatest fear is probably that you're, something would happen to your mother, right? And we have step on a crack, break your mother's back, right? That's uh, So many of us have avoided stepping on cracks with some kind of a superstitious idea that it will prevent something. Well, it makes sense in a way. The greatest fear is that something will happen to your mother, but you're four or whatever. And there's nothing you can do about that. She's going to die someday 
or something might happen to her. She might get sick. She might break her back to just follow that train of thought. So you make something up that will uh, prevent it and soothe your mind. So if I don't step on the cracks, my mother will be fine. Um, so that's really, really kind of common stuff. And that's partly why the DSM gives us an amount of time per day that it needs to take up. So the DSM basically says if it's less than an hour a day and it's not distressing, it's probably within the realm of typical because a lot of us have something like this. So that is obsessions and compulsions. We're still going to talk a little more about OCD in the next video. Okay, and I'm going to end this one here.